Good morning. The real question is, am I going to be as excited about this trip after it's done as I am right now? Well, I guess you'll just have to keep watching to find out. You see, today I'll be flying with Singapore Airlines on the re-inaugural launch of their flight between New York City and Singapore. It's the longest flight in the world. I'm coming back with SAS, uh, with Scandinavian, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that and a lot of other exciting flying. There's a lot of flying to do. Hey Sam. Hi. Uh, you ready to board? Yes. We got to board early to see the plane. All right. Let's check it out. Mm -hmm. The saying goes, "Fortune favors the bold." Well, I was lucky enough to find myself in amongst the press as we explored the plane before we even boarded. This airplane only includes a business class and premium economy cabin. There's no regular economy and no first class on this specially outfitted A350-900 ULR. I think you'll agree with me, these window seats at the back of the premium economy cabin are really probably the best in the entire plane. They're rows 42, 41, and 40. Now of course there'll be plenty of time to explore the cabin in even more detail on this incredibly long flight, but let's have a walk through. Everybody was so friendly in this festive occasion. Well, here it is, home for a trip quite literally to the other side of the planet, seat 16K. Spoiler alert, there are some things that Singapore could improve upon, but we'll take a look at those a little later. One thing that's pretty near perfect, at least in my opinion, is this airplane. I just think it's beautiful. I am so excited about this trip. I cannot wait to share it with you. A business class ticket with Singapore will get you access to the Virgin Atlantic Clubhouse in Newark. It's very nice. Now this is America. How is everyone? Yay! Well, it's good to see all of you flying with the best airline, ladies and gentlemen. This, of course, proudly is Singapore Airlines. We are going to be commemorating a very special moment for you and us at Singapore Airlines. As you can see in the backdrop, the Singapore Airlines ultra-long range flight being brought back right here to New York and of course the New York Airport right here as well. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start, let's welcome one another. You're going to see them on this nice long flight with a huge round of applause. Welcome to Singapore Airlines. Three. Now we have it, ladies and gentlemen. There we have it. Congratulations to all right here. Now, listen, Joe. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and fly right. I said, come fly with me. Let's fly. Let's fly away. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Well. Hello, 16K. Hey, no problem. 16K. I'm in the room across Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
So first impression of the seat, I have not sat in a Singapore business class seat ever. The only time I flew to Singapore was in uh, a middle seat in the back row of an A380 in economy. So this is unbelievably luxurious. I cannot wait to spend 18 hours and 45 minutes in this seat. It's going to be pretty crazy. We'll be taking a look in that bag in just a few minutes. You ready, Philippe? Oh, yeah. I'm you ready for a good flight? So happy. <laughs> this is the day. It is. Pre departure beverages of juice were provided. This was designed to keep passengers hydrated. Now, one of the first things I do as soon as I get onto an airplane is adjust my clock to the new time zone. In this case, we would be crossing 12 time zones. What? to Singapore. My name is uh, Ray Chowdhury and I have the pleasure of being the captain of this flight. We are waiting for our doors to close before we start our journey. Flight time today is 17 hours and 20 minutes. Now, um, you walk the route, you walk to Singapore, I believe missed us quite a bit. And I must say that we missed her equally. Uh, and I'm glad to announce that we are back. First SQ-21 on our shiny new A350 ultra long range aircraft. We'll be starting a departure in the next few minutes. Our route will take off from Newark and we'll head in a northerly direction past Canada. We'll head towards the North Pole. Our route today takes us just off the North Pole. We'll be going up to 87 degrees north. And then as we cross the North Pole, 12th October becomes 13th October. And we fly down south across Siberia, Mongolia, China, Laos, Thailand, Malaysia, and then on to Singapore. We'll be coming up to the North Pole about five hours into the flight, and that region will be at around 40,000 feet, and will take about half an hour to cross that region. One of my favorite parts of this flight was the water cannon salute. It reminded us all what a special day this was. That said, I think the winds, or maybe the operator, was having a little trouble with this one. Singapore provides noise-canceling headphones in business class, and unlike most of the ones I've tried, I actually really liked Singapore Airlines' noise-canceling headphones. Shortly after takeoff, I put in a movie, leaned back, and got, well, slightly uncomfortable. You see, the seat's not directly lined up with the screen. Internet access was available, which is crazy to think about where we were flying, over the North Pole. I wish it weren't regulated by the number of megabytes, but rather time. That would be easier for me to track, but it was nice to have it. Singapore offers a kind of do-it-yourself amenity kit, allowing passengers to select only those items they think they want. Now, when you couple that amenity kit with all of the other stuff we got for being on an inaugural flight, you can tell our bags were full. I particularly enjoyed the model of the Airbus A350-900 that we were given as a memento. Now, have you ever seen fabric fresh or crease release in an amenity kit? Kind of a clever idea. The catering on this flight was on point. Everything, everything was absolutely delicious. This wine is normally reserved for first class, but because this was a special flight, they brought it out. Some passengers complained about cold food, especially the entree on this first course. I didn't experience that. 
And I suffered for you again, folks. I ate the dessert, and it was good. After lunch or dinner, I don't know what it was, depending on the time zone, I had to get some work done. Now, the tray table was pretty good for that. It's nice that it's adjustable, which means you can use it whether you're in a bed mode or in the seat mode. Now, I wasn't able to get work done for much longer because my friend Sam came up to borrow my view. I think you'll see why. Pretty spectacular views of the snow-covered Canadian north as we flew toward the North Pole. As the sun began to set, I and many of my fellow passengers in this business class cabin started to think about going to bed. The captain, though, had other plans for us. The North Pole, the actual North Pole, the uh, slightly to the left of the aircraft, will be passing this region, uh, 87 North, to the point Amberi, which is in uh, Siberia, Russian Siberia, also in 87 North. Unfortunately, there's not much to look at. The sun is setting on the left side of the aircraft. Uh, just to let you know that uh, we will be traversing this uh, northernmost point for about 30 minutes starting now. Thank you. After staring out the window at that nothingness, knowing that the North Pole was just over the horizon, I asked for some help to turn my seat into a bed. Now, Singapore has a unique feature in which the, the seat sort of flips forward and turns into a bed. And uh, before I knew it, flight attendant had taken care of that, and I was ready for sleep. Now, I found this to be not the most comfortable sleep in the world because of that right turn at the base of the bed. And that's a wrap. It's time to go to bed. Good night for now. Hey guys, um, I've been sleeping and I just woke up and, and uh, just felt so much gratitude, honestly, for the fact that I can, uh, I'm on an airplane uh, traveling farther than, uh, well, you know, anybody else on an airplane can travel today uh, in unbelievable comfort. Uh, this is an incredible opportunity and I'm so glad to have it and to be able to share it with you in this way is uh, equally meaningful so thank you so much for watching and uh, I know there's a lot more to come uh, on this trip but uh, I don't know I just felt this sense of gratitude and I wanted to share it with you so thanks for indulging me that but let's get back to the flying I went to the bathroom I came back my bed had been turned into a seat and ready for a latte Singapore Business class passengers on this flight are offered three meals. Now, I was so full from the two that I ate, I didn't need that third. This second course, by the way, was just as good as the first. That lamb was perfectly prepared. I'll say more about the in-flight entertainment in just a few minutes, but for now I'll say this was my favorite channel. There were some pretty amazing views out the window as we explored a part of the world I frankly haven't ever visited. It's beautiful down there. I wasn't the only one who believed that it wasn't a good idea to sit down for a flight of this length, so I decided to explore the cabin a little bit. The premium economy cabin is arranged in a 2-4-2 configuration. Don't forget about those seats at the back of the cabin, they're just individual seats. There are two business class cabins. This is the larger one. It's located in the middle of the plane. It's arranged in a 1-2-1 one, one configuration, which is the same in the smaller forward cabin where I'm sitting in 16K. 
Now, I'll admit it, it took me a while to get the hang of the in-flight entertainment system. For one thing, it's not a touchscreen. The only way to control it is on the handset. And I didn't find the handset to be that intuitive. It requires a combination of tapping on the screen and using kind of a keypad or joystick to navigate through. That said, there were plenty of choices, which is critically important on a flight of this length. I watched four movies during my flight. And the in-flight map, the tracking uh, map, is, is very nice as well. A word about storage. In addition to the overhead bin, if you look underneath the sort of extension of the ottoman or footrest, you'll see there's a space for a carry-on bag. It had more than enough room for my oversized briefcase. Just like that, the world is a smaller place. What a great flight this was, I thought. The, um, the service was really uh, spectacular. Uh, the food program was incredible. The seat has a few quirks, but uh, is definitely nice. And uh, the entertainment, a couple of hiccups, but uh, nothing, nothing too terrible. So the real question is, how do I feel after this long a flight? And the answer is pretty good. Um, I think if I were going from... Uh, the east coast of the United States to Singapore. I think this particular uh, way of going makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, I don't mind to stop in the in the middle, but it's nice not to have to deal with that kind of hassle. So, as for me, I think I'll give it another try. But I want to know what you think. So leave me a comment. Let me know uh, your thoughts about this flight. Give me a thumbs up. I sure would appreciate that. If you didn't like the video, <laughs> double click the thumbs down button and then give me more feedback about what I can do better. More than anything, I really hope you'll subscribe because there are a lot of very exciting trips coming up, including a trip with Malaysian and another A350, uh, I think tomorrow, as a matter of fact. So keep track for that. Between now and the next time, see you in the sky.